Hey guys, it's Nutter Alex here, and today we're going to be continuing my level guide. Uh, so in the first video, I had levels 1 to 30, then 30 to 60, and in this guide, it's going to be what you do post 60. So I'd say definitely post 60 is when you are in the end game. Uh, you could make an argument that end game starts later, but I feel like once you're level 60, you have around the amount of Silver Era troops you need to cap out your leadership, and Silver Era units are still very strong. Post 60 is also when you're going to be matched with anybody post 60. Uh, so in that way, you're kind of end game as well, because you're going to be going against the toughest competition. You're also strong enough now that uh, guilds will really take you seriously, so you could probably get into a house now. Uh, you can really pick and choose which house you want to join. And now you're going to be very useful in Territory Wars, which is the true end game of this game. So this guide today is going to go over units, what units you should go for in the Heroic Era. It's also going to talk about um, your gear what what gear you should go for how to get that end game gear and it'll also talk about what you should be doing in terms of uh ais should you do sieges should you do field battles what should you do to level up uh some useful ways to level up how to manage your bronze maybe a little bit better yeah so that's it so let's get into it so in my last video i basically stated that level 1 to 30 should be spent playing the game, PvP, get used to it, try to do as many siege or field battles as you can. In 30 to 60, I said change it up, do AIs, because you're just going to get run over by higher level players. But once you're post 60, you're going to have to do a little bit of both. Uh, I found that I grinded too much, and now I'm not actually very good at the game admittedly. So that was my mistake. I kept on trying to grind in AIs, I was trying to save my bronze, and now I have almost too much bronze. I have over 200k with nothing to do with it. So now you really want to balance out your AI leveling and your siege leveling, because you still want to be good at the game, and the best way to get good at the game is to play other people in PvP. So right now I just want to show you what I'm working with. So I'm level about 125, uh, and these are the levels I have on my units. As you can see, I have some units I don't have leveled up at all, and I have some units that are very leveled up. So you should definitely pick a solid core of units where you like using, you use them correctly or well, and you should be really sticking with some of those units to level them up. Not only do you get the level perks uh, when you get a veterancy point, uh, you get to level them up that way, but also, the units gain health, um, and I know on my Prefecture Guards they gain a lot of health. So really trying to find those few units that you enjoy using, and really sticking with them and getting them to max level. So this tree where my mouse is, is the Heroic Era units. Um, they're very diverse, they all have a different role, and I think around this time the roles become more of a thing, as opposed to just uh, melee or ranged. Um, so yeah, this is when the game kind of opens up in terms of units. Uh, so those are all the Heroic Era units, and now I'm going to talk about which one you should go for first. If you watched my other video, um, I explained why you should go for Archers first, but just to sum it up, uh, Archers and AI battles are less likely to die. Um, as opposed to a frontline melee unit. So you should go for the archers first because they're going to die less, but you'll still get experience for them, and therefore you're gaining bronze. Um, like I said before, heroic units are very expensive, so kind of grinding them up is going to be a pain now. Just as an example, one kit of these mercenary bowmen is 3,000 bronze, and that's even on the cheap side of the heroic units. So why these mercenary longbowmen? Uh, the first reason is their leadership is quite low for a heroic unit, um, so that helps a lot. Also, their range, so this is obviously what makes them the longbowmen. Now I'm going to admit that these longbowmen aren't the strongest unit. Um, their damage is quite similar to what you would have with the prefecture or the mercenary fire archers. But this range is really niche, and it could be very important come Territory War time. Uh, I know I've seen people in Siege Battles put them into really nifty spots where they're really hard to get, 
but their range will still be able to keep them safe while they're doing lots of damage. So while these guys are niche a bit in that their range is what makes them a good unit, they still are a very good unit. Um, they're only 40 more leadership than the Prefecture Archers, for example, and come Territory War times, you might be able to put them into nifty spots that really turn the tide in battle. Also, mine are in a very high level, but if you look at the top veterancy tree, uh, they get more of what makes them good at what they do. The top one gives them more range, and it also gives them more accuracy. So overall, I would say, you know, go for these. Uh, they won't really die in AI battles, so you can level them up a little bit better. They're not that expensive, and they're not that much of a drain on leadership. So the last thing I want to talk about is gear. So I'm level 125, and I was just able to get the heavy armor and game gear. Now, if you're a medium armor user or a light armor user, everything's going to come a little bit sooner because it's cheaper. For example, I know the medium armor, to get a full set of it, uh, you're probably just paying over 100k silver, whereas I paid, for the heavy armor stuff, over 200k silver. But really in this game, you're not going to get your endgame gear until quite a bit later. Also, when you have the endgame gear, don't use it for siege battles or AI battles. It's kind of a waste, unless if you have two pairs of it. But instead, just save it for territory wartime. Because as you know, gear in this game does degrade as you use it and as you die. So an expensive piece of armor like this, you really want to keep in the important time. So I definitely recommend, once you get your full set of the endgame gear... Whether that's Guardsman for Heavy, Carnifix for Medium, I'm not even sure what the light one is. But you really want to just use it for the important territory wars instead of using them for Siege or else you're going to run out and then you probably can't afford it again. Also, you're most likely going to have to buy all this gear from the AH or the Auction House. Uh, the Auction House will be in the AI city um, of whatever region you start in. You can get the gear from Sieges, but honestly, like I've gotten two, they've both been the same, and they both weren't my armor type. So you're better off just saving all the silver you can, and then once you can buy a full set of it, go buy a full set of it. So you get that two and four piece bonus. That's all I have to say for gear, so let's get into the grind. The grind of the endgame and what you should do post-60. So first I'm going to start with the AI battles. So what I do here is I bring a melee unit that's new and under leveled and I bring them and I choose them first to come out with me. And as you can see from this video, you can also see that I'm bringing my longbowmen out. Uh, you can fill the rest with whatever units you kind of want. Uh, I find two is basically all you need. Sometimes I'll bring out something else, but it's mainly the two that I'm leveling. A little bit more about the melee unit I'm bringing out. So it is a silver unit, but it's really like a heroic unit in terms of how strong it is and how much it costs. Uh, that's the chivalric spear unit, the spear sergeants. Um, they are actually a silver era unit, but they really perform like a heroic era unit. These guys are very expensive, and they're not very high level right now. So the tactic I do is I bring out a melee unit that I want to level, and then I switch it to my mercenary bowman right when the battle starts. This ensures that the experience is split between the two, and because I have this low-level spearman that's coming out, they won't die, because they will die. Uh, to the heroes and stuff and then it costs a lot in bronze so you want to take out your new fancy strong melee unit and then as soon as you can switch it to your mercenary bowman or whatever archers you have so they both get even xp and you're spending a lot less bronze so the last thing i'm going to talk about are siege battles so in the beginning of the video i explained that i probably did too much AIs up until this point, so I kind of am not that good at the game. And 
what I realized is I probably should have just been playing sieges. I have enough bronze to be able to afford to bring good troops into sieges, and I sh that's what I should have been doing, or else I would probably be better right now. You still do need to find a balance between doing AIs and doing sieges at this point, but you kind of have to play it with how much bronze you have. Uh, you kind of have to make the decision for yourself. So what I have to say about sieges is don't bring any units that you have max level. It's really a waste to bring max level troops into these sieges. For one, uh, they don't really mean much. Of course, it means you might win or lose, but it doesn't really. It's not ranked. Uh, it has no consequences in the long run and I'm not a fan of wasting experience or wasting anything so what I would say is bring in some definitely bring in some low tier units because you're going to need it to fill leadership and then once you level those up unlock another low tier unit so right now in sieges I bring the militia swordsman in uh, just because it fills up leadership but once these become max level I think I'm going to unlock uh, the militia Bowman, because down the road you never know how the game will change, if we're going to get more leadership, and you're going to want to fill out as much leadership as you can, and you want to be diverse in that. So what I would say is that once you level up uh, one of your lobby militia units, unlock another one. In this game, I believe as we get maybe a year into it, the people who have the greater diversity in troops are going to come out on top. So I showed you the AI battles. Both those units are very new and they're both very expensive. That's how I'm going to grind them until about level 10. And then once they're level 10, I feel like they'll be strong enough to actually warrant using in a siege battle. And then I'll bring them in. So really what you should do is use your AI battles as kind of like a farming period. Think of you if you're into sports, uh, every team has a farm team where they develop. Use that for your new higher level troops. And then once they reach about level 10, I'd say uh, you might want to look at the stats yourself. Uh, bring them into sieges. And then once the guys who are max level from leveling in sieges get there, take them out. I think it's a very bad idea to waste experience. Now the downside to this is that you're going to be spending real life money um, on the expansion permits. That's something I've come to terms with. That's one way I think this game does get you outside of the subscription. But I don't know, $10 investment means you get 10 more troops to really upgrade and play with. So yeah, in conclusion, use the AI battles to upgrade your new, more expensive troops until they're about level 10, and then start bringing them into sieges. Once the troops you were leveling before that are max level, just take them out. Only use those guys for territory wars. This is a little painful, definitely, but in the long run, this is what's going to separate the people who only know how to use five units and the people who are much more diverse. So that's the end of the video. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing a video on Conker's Blade like this once a week. I believe the next one will just be 10 tips and tricks kind of thing. So that's it. Have a nice day.